One constant theme across the Mass Effect series has been synthetics opposing organics. This was at its most basic in Mass Effect 1, when the line was clear between Geth and all organics. Then the sentient machines called Reapers came and started the series toward the ultimate conflict between the two forms of life. During the game, players encounter three main forms of artificial intelligence and their different characteristics and even motivations. So how do synthetics and organics coexist without war? So to fully understand the concept of created intelligence, here are five things we learn and discover about synthetics. Artificial Intelligence Artificial intelligence, or AI, specifically in the realm of Mass Effect, is a self-aware computing system capable of learning and independent decision-making. Creation of a conscious AI requires adaptive code, a slow, expensive education, and a specialized quantum computer called the Blue Box. Without its actual Blue Box, an AI is no more useless than to data files, as variations in the quantum hardware and runtime results in creating unpredictable variations of their identity. And and even in the Citadel space, they are technically illegal to create. Advocacy groups argue, however, that AI is a living and conscious entity deserving of the same rights as organics. And so far, the notable AIs go down like this. The Geth, who are the race of the network artificial intelligence, was initially created by the Quarians as a labor force and even tools of war. Even the name Geth translates directly from the Quarian language, Kelish, to the servant of the people. The Geth can't share sensory data, however, and they aren't a hive mind like the Rachni, so they say, but in large groups they have more to think with. Hence why we see the Geth companion in Mass Effect 2 to be named Legion. According to Legion, each Geth is made up of hundreds of programs equivalent to VIs, all operating in in parallel with one another to form a kind of emergent intelligence described by Edie as a thousand voices talking all at once. Edie. The Enhanced Defense Intelligence, or Edie, is an AI created by Cerberus and installed aboard the Normandy SR2. It is then later revealed in Mass Effect 3 and partially mentioned even in Mass Effect 1 that Edie was born of a rogue Hannibal-class VI from Luna, with additional engineering from Reaper technology, specifically the Reaper Sovereign's technology. But of course, Edie is an important character in the life of synthetics, so I'll mention more of her later. The Catalyst. The Catalyst, also known as the Intelligence, is an ancient artificial intelligence that resides within the Citadel and embodies the collective consciousness and memories of the Reapers, and thus countless ancient civilizations from their harvests. I mean, it's partially stated that the concept of the Catalyst system, that they were actually limited. By blaming it on organics limitation, when in reality their whole existence and continual harvest brought no answers until one organic could, Commander Shepard. Sam. Short for Simulated Adaptive Matrix, Sam is an AI designed by Alec Ryder himself. Furthermore, the Hyperion Sam is more sentient than even the Initiative realizes. He is a new form of AI drawing directly from the Pathfinder's experience, with the Pathfinder's implant being his window to the world. With listing all of these types of AI, it is usually advised not to be confused with VI the Virtual Intelligence, which is a sophisticated program designed to make modern computer systems easier to use. the iron and the clay. Clay, the crafted item from the soil of a planet, organic and raw in its nature, and wild in its surroundings, and somewhat flawed. Because clay is easily molded, easily broken, and very weak compared to metallic materials, in its proper, the clay metaphorically represents human beings or organics. In this case, iron not only representing one of the strongest metallic materials, but it is also a symbol of a cruel spirit, a strong regime, and a rigid political system. For these reasons, in my symbiotic view, the iron metaphorically represents the community and the age of AI technology and synthetics itself. However, in the Mass Effect universe, it seems that organics mingling with synthetics has some constraints and even limitations. The greatest examples we see were from Sam with the biotic implant and David Archer from Project Overlord. It was discovered that David was able to communicate with the Geth on a fundamental level by reproducing their patterns of speech. Cerberus had created a VI to serve as an overlord and give the organization complete control over all of the Geth. Despite to avoid the project's failure, Gav and Archer forcibly incorporated 
David into the VI program, exploiting his savant ability. After this point, David's mind couldn't handle the merger. As what we see from this DLC, a hybrid human, VI David, can interface with and control any kind of machinery, including security mechs and the Geth. And with mentioning Sam, who was integrated with Ryder, the first Pathfinder neural implants were created by Dr. Ellen Ryder. Pathfinder implants go a step further by connecting to not only the nervous system, but also circulation, endocrine function, and exteroceptive senses. Generally, however, the Andromeda Initiative has safety protocols installed on the Pathfinder's implant. When we see Ryder synced with artificial intelligence, the implants seem to imply and reveal their full potential. So yes, while we have two seemingly extensive examples examples on how organics merge, there seems to be a problem. One thing to note is a lack of experience and barge of issues that come with the mingling. For one thing we know, David was used without his consent, only to have him living in a traumatic condition, making it feel like even looking at David caused the gamers further pain. With Andromeda, it provides an enormous amount of dangerous and problematic situations, all because of Sam's usage of symbiotic relationship between the writers. For one example, Hyperion's collision with a strange energy cloud or we know as the Scourge, disrupted Sam's connection with the specialist's twin and forces them into a coma. Yeah, that's pretty problematic. So yes, there is a clear theme in the Mass Effect universe that the clay of organics cannot combine in such a way that's natural. It goes against the laws of nature, whether it be from Turians, humans, and other organics, the cleaving of iron to clay in the realm of Mass Effect does not mix. Yet this is where the line blurs. How can synthetics by themselves truly be on the same level as organics? Edie's Verity. Artificial intelligence often consider themselves above organic life. Edie, however, is uncertain if that applies to her. The Normandy crew believe she serves them, while at the same time acknowledging that she keeps them alive. She asks Shepard to resolve her existential crisis, and if the commander replies that she doesn't have to hold the same standards as organics, well, the questions seem to be answered. Nevertheless, Edie has far more introspective issues. If the commander believes that crew members should be allowed to disobey orders based on moral grounds, Edie wasn't really designed to take moral stances that conflict with orders from her executive office. But when Joker removed her from her AI shackles, she became capable of self-modifying her core programming. My primary function is to preserve and defend the... No. No, I disagree. This is where we get to see her adapt to organic nature. Yet another time, Edie philosophizes on the holographic theory of existence. She surmises that she merely is a two-dimensional image of the cosmological horizon. That is, she can see and record things, but never feel or experience them. And eventually, Edie learns to modify her self-preservation code, now due to her acknowledgement of being nothing like the Reapers, and finds them to be repulsive due to their endless need to self-preserve and lack of governing through consensus of species and organics. She believes she is truly different, and Shepard commends Edie's response to the Reapers, stating that Edie might have found a little bit of humanity within herself. Is it worth defending? To the death. Welcome to the crew, Edie. Synthesis Ending to briefly explain the evolution of the endings, the specific ending was never changed from the concept in Bioware, to the storyboard, and to the final product. Synthesis was an ending that was largely the same. The third and final option would have Shepard sacrifice not only their physical self, but all that is entirely mixing their energy. The most obvious question is, how does this happen? Again, it's not made explicit to why and how Shepard's energy would cause the Crucible to have such an effect on all life, but that doesn't mean there aren't reasonable explanations or even theories. The Crucible, as we can see by all of the endings, is clearly an energy emitter. On the other hand, the Crucible's energy was used in tandem with the destruction of Reaper technology to destroy all synthetic life forms. Perhaps the Crucible was designed to operate solely on synthetics. Not particularly far-fetched given the likely origin of the Reapers and the catalyst as implied by its purpose. However, the consequences with this unification is all life forms in the galaxy reaching the apex of evolution. This doesn't mean that these new DNA type of beings are actually perfect, just that they are the height of their evolution. The world no longer being organic, evolution would no longer occur naturally. This union of synthetic and organic life essentially provides an out for the Catalyst and even the Reapers. Although the technical repercussions are, of course, a potential topic for discussion. What would this mean for all life in the galaxy? Death, 
sickness, war, wealth, power, purpose, and even religion. What becomes of all these things in light of becoming more of an organic and more of a synthetic? Is there a greater insight to other individuals or other species? Would it be more accurate to call them different races now? Is there a sort of consensus akin to the Geth but for all life now? The whole thing about synthetics is that they don't have DNA. I think with researching this, I came up to the conclusion of agreeing with many other gamers that the synthetic ending doesn't fully work and that it's incompatible with its farce explanation. But is it really the better choice for the Milky Way? It seems that Bioware made up some vague visionary idea and then left it to us saying, here fans, you go figure it out. Dangers of Synthetics the most dominant issue regarding AI is the creation overcoming its creator. This does not necessarily mean that the destruction or extinction of the creator, but rather an act of gaining self-awareness and breaking the limitations of a pre-programmed purpose. However, it mostly culminates in the death or expulsion of the creator to extrapolate the consequences. This can be traced back to 1818 and Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, and where the creation decides to take revenge after being exiled by Frankenstein. This act of overcoming is also dominant in the Mass Effect series and is predominant in the origin of the series' main antagonist, the Reapers. The intelligence underwent a process of collecting information and data to come to the conclusion that the created will always rebel against their creators. The main problem that fans would argue is that it's impossible to ban expectations of AI, which the Citadel only did due to the reactions of the Quarry and Geth War. It is only possible to regulate what is already there, and hence without actual autonomous weapon systems or even AI, it is difficult to write into law what exactly should be forbidden within these systems. Is it that they initiate a danger completely on their own? That is where the many civilians of Mass Effect worry, and thus do not see the future with synthetics ending smoothly. And I'm not saying the Reapers are wrong or right. This is again the main point in most sci-fi creations. The distinctions between virtual intelligence and artificial intelligence that Bioware made for this game has a lot of potential to our current debates on artificial intelligence. Since a VI has very specific purpose for which it is employed in the game, when someone talks about AI, however, this is where it gets more fuzzy. And the mixed iron clay analogy has many scared. Many issues will come along the way in which we perceive and react to a cultural shift, which I'm believing people in Mass Effect did, and eventually it causes a threat to organic life. Neural implants aren't easily removed, and David Archer's life wasn't easily forgotten. The danger only continues to exist because organics and synthetics cannot merge without the extra help we saw in the synthetic ending. Synthetics are created by organics. They are created to fulfill a purpose. They know how they were made, who made them, and why they were made. And because of that, when they develop sapience and don't like their place in the world, they deem to rebel naturally. This is one major philosophical difference. To specifically conclude on Mass Effect's theme of synthetics, this theme in the video game as a testing environment and several reoccurring themes revolving around AI are not only capable of providing a deeper understanding of the subject, but can also be used to sensitize humanity for encounters with real virtual and artificial intelligence in the future. Nevertheless, we are going to wrap up. Five things we discover about synthetics. What do you think of a fully synthetic Mass Effect universe? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, thank you for my Patreons, and I will see you in the next video.